Hello and welcome to the third in our series of Quiz Night. Already four teams have been knocked out of this competition and in about, uh, I don't know, ten minutes' time, another one will have joined the lists of the vanquished. Let's have a look at our first two teams and their head-to-head -head tonight. We start with the Blackpool Cricket Club, introduced as always by their captain. Hello, I'm David Hesp. On my right is Steve Brennan and on my left, Robert Wright. Thank you, Blackpool. Let's move across to their opponents, the Padgate Community Centre, introduced by their captain. Hello, I'm Cliff Horton. On my right is Brian Glover and on my left, Ken Bagley. Thank you, the Warrington team. A big round of applause, please, for both teams as we go into round one. Yes, well, as we know by now, teamwork is what it's all about in round one. I will be giving each team 80 seconds each to answer a whole series of general knowledge questions. I'll ask each team member the questions individually. If they get them right, they get two points. But if they indulge in a little bit of teamwork, in other words, if they confer or consult with their colleagues, then they get just one point. So, 80 seconds. We'll get straight off with uh, the Blackpool team. And we start with Steve. Your 80 seconds of teamwork starts now. In which holy city in Saudi Arabia is the Prophet Muhammad buried? Mecca. I'm afraid that's wrong. It was Medina. David, what did D.H. Lawrence call the novel that he published in 1923 about his travels in Australia? Phoenix. Wrong. It was Kangaroo. Bob, what name is given to the waterfront area of San Francisco, named after the pirate-ridden area of North Africa's coast? Barbary Coast. He is correct. You've got off to a start. Two points. Steve, what biblical name is used for an oversized bottle of champagne that contains the equivalent of four normal bottles? Methuselah. No, it's Jerry Bowen. David, Dallas International Airport is one of the two airports serving which city? Pass. Washington. Washington. All right, I'll take that. Washington, D.C. for one point. Bob, in which country are the vineyards of Pal? Lebanon. Lebanon. No, it's South Africa. Bad luck. Steve, which Saxon outlaw led the local opposition to the Normans after the invasion of 1066? Hadderwood the Way. It's correct. Two points. David, which well-known racehorse owner was until 1987 in control of Vernon's Pools? Robert Sangster. Correct. Two points. Bob, which British king died in France in 1701, 13 years after he'd hurriedly fled from Britain? James II. James II. James II. One point. Steve, what's the name of the umpire to whom Mike Gatting wrote a note of apology after the Faisalabad test? Shakurana. Yes, you have answered correctly, and you get two points for that. So at the end of their first round, they've done very well. After a slightly slow start, Blackpool have ten points. <laughs> they caught up very well there. Ten points is a good starting score. Let's move straight across to Warrington. Your 80 seconds of teamwork begins now. Brian, what is the official title of the hospital nicknamed St. Elsewhere in the Channel 4 television series? St. Elizabeth. St. Elegius. St. Elegius. Yes, for one point after conferring. Cliff, who wrote Testament of Youth and Testament of Friendship? Conferring. Sorry. Vera Britton. Is correct. Two point, uh, one point. Ken, a group or collection of which bird is known as a charm or a cherm? You can confirm. Nightingales. No, it's goldfinches. Bad luck. Brian, which short Latin word is used by a proofreader to indicate that a passage crossed out should remain in the text? Stat. Is correct. Two points. Cliff, in which city was civil rights leader Martin Luther King assassinated on April the 4th, 1968? Memphis. Is correct. Two points. Ken, the Sultanate of Brunei is on which large island? Borneo. Correct. Brian, in the famous Monty Python sketch about a dead parrot, what breed was the bird said to be? Pass. It was Norwegian Blue. I didn't know that. Cliff, what's the traditional name of a hospital social worker who deals with the general welfare of patients? Almana. Is correct. Did you confer that? Yes. You did. One point. Ken, as a result of seeing the Battle of Solferino in 1859, what did Jean-Henri Dunant set up? Red Cross. Is correct. Two points. Brian, in what way did Thomas Boulder edit Shakespeare that made the word boulderize part of the English language? He took out all the rude words. And you made it on the buzzer as well. He cut out all the suggestive or all the naughty bits. And well done. That's taken Warrington's score to 13. Blackpool's is 10, so Warrington are in the lead after the first round. We go into round two. And we go into the spotlight round now, so I invite uh, Steve Brennan and uh, Ken Bagley from the Blackpool and Warrington teams respectively to step forward as quickly as you can please gentlemen, because if you've seen the show before you know this is the spotlight round where one member of each team is nominated by their peers to answer questions on their chosen specialist subjects. They get five questions each and they'll get three points for each correct answer if, however, 
they don't get the right answer, then I will pass it across to their opponent for a possible bonus of three points. So we're going to start with you, Steve. Your specialist subject is films, and here's your first of five questions. Which 1963 film's alternative title was How I Learned to Stop Worrying and Love the Bomb? Dr. Strangelove. Is correct for your first three points. Ken, your spotlight subject is science, and here's your first question. Any moving body will continue moving in a straight line at constant speed unless acted upon by an outside force. This is the first law of motion of which scientist? Newton. Correct, three points. On to your second question now, Steve. Which stage and film musical was based on Thornton Wilder's play, The Matchmaker? Hello, Dolly. Is correct. You have another three points. Ken, your second question. How many grains are there in one troy ounce? Take your time. Um. Five thousand six hundred. No, I'm afraid that's wrong, and I hand across to Steve. Can you pick it up for the bonus? A million. <laughs> no, it's a humble 480. Oh, you knew it. Bad luck, bad luck. All right, Steve, your third question now in the spotlight. The young American film actor Emilio Estevez is the son of which film star? Martin Sheen. Is correct. Three points. And on to your, your third question now, Ken. Which French physicist discovered that uranium salts would fog a photographic plate and has given his name to a unit of radioactivity? Becquerel. Correct. Three points. On your fourth question now, Steve, which 1986 film musical was based on a novel by Colin McInnes? Absolute Beginners. Another three points for you. And your fourth question, Ken. Catalytic cracking is the commercial process of heating and decomposing which substance? Coal tar. Will you say that again? Coal tar. Or oil. I... If you wish. I don't think I can accept that. We have to have precise answers on the spotlight round, so Steve, you can possibly pick it up for a bonus. Bitumen. No, the correct answer was crude oil. That was the answer I was looking for, Ken. You came close, but yes. not close enough for spotlight. And on to your fifth and final question now, Steve. Who played the title role in the 1974 Bond film, The Man with the Golden Gun? Christopher Lee. Absolutely right. And we move to your fifth and final question now, Ken. What is the Fahrenheit equivalent of minus... 17.8 degrees centigrade. I think you'll have to answer. I'm sorry, um, Just a couple more seconds. No, minus 52. Not minus 52. I can hand that across for a possible bonus to Steve. Minus 38. No, in fact, the correct answer was naught degrees Fahrenheit. But never mind, you both had an extremely good spotlight round. Congratulations. Please return to your teammates. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs> right. <clears throat> Let's have a look at the scores now at the end of that second round. And we see that uh, the Padgate Community Centre of Warrington have 19 points. But comfortably in the lead is the Blackpool Cricket Club with 25. As we go into round three... Yes, there really is everything to play for. The gap isn't that wide as we go into our third and final round of this head-to-head -head between Blackpool and Warrington on the buzzer. Um, they will get 100 seconds to answer as many general knowledge questions as I can fire at them. They're all on the buzzer here, so anybody can dive in if they think they know the answer. If they get it right, they'll get two points. If they get it wrong on this round, I will take a point off their score. So this is a crucial make-or-break round. You have 100 seconds, Blackpool and Warrington, starting from... Now, which player did Manchester United sell for £2 million to Barcelona in 1986? And that's Warrington Cliff. Mark Hughes. Correct. Two points. What's the Latin name of the constellation of seven bright stars that form the Plough or the Big Dipper? And that's Blackpool and Steve. The Pleiades. Is wrong. You lose a point. It's Ursa Major. I Could Be Happy With You and A Room in Bloomsbury are songs from which musical show? And that's Blackpool David. The boyfriend. Correct. Two points. Which country has a name that means the saviour, the name being Spanish? And that's Blackpool Bob. El Salvador. Correct. The Day of the Scorpion, The Towers of Silence, A Division of the Spoils. Which other novel? And that's Blackpool Steve. Um... Jewel in the Crown. Well done, yes, Jewel in the Crown. To which king, and I have to have the number, was Marie Antoinette married? And that's Blackpool Steve again. Louis XVI. Correct. Stood a lowly cattle shed is the second line of which carol? 
And that's Blackpool and Bob. Once in Royal David City. Correct. Who composed the ballet music for Petrushka, Puccinella, and... And that's uh, Warrington and Ken. Stravinsky. Correct. At which battle with a famous name did the Greeks defeat the Persians in 490 BC? Warrington Bryan. Marathon. Correct. Which GM Vauxhall conference team did Tommy Doherty quit as manager of? And that's Warrington Cliff. Altringham. Correct. In which Indian city is the golden temple of the Sikh religion? And that's Blackpool's David. Amritsar. Correct. Which former foreign secretary was appointed chairman of the auction house Christie's in 1988? Blackpool and Steve. Francis Pym. Wrong. It was Lord Carrington. You lose a point. The Latin word, stanum, abbreviated to the symbol... You actually got in, I think, there with the, uh, with, with the answer. That was Bob, wasn't it, at Blackpool? Would yeah. you like to give the answer? Tin. Tin was the correct answer. That was the uh, initials which indicated the element. Well done. So let's have a look at the scores at the end of that third and final round. And we see that by 10 clear points, Blackpool Cricket Club are the winners with 37. Well done. <laughs> so, Blackpool... Blackpool reached the boundary, they go through, and in part two we'll find out who their next opponents will be as more teams, this time from Stockport and Bury, do battle in quiz night. So please, join us after the break. <laughs> Welcome back to part two of... Quiz night. Well, who will Blackpool meet in their second round of this competition? You never know. It might be these gentlemen from the comfy Jill in Stockport, introduced now by their captain. My name is Mike Young, and on my left is uh, Hamish Glass, and on my right, Dave Bell. Thank you very much indeed. Let's move straight across to their opponents in this round. It's the Elton View of Bury. Their captain will do the honours, please. Hello, my name's Jim Hobbins. On my left is Lyndon Prosser, and on my right is Terry Walsh. Thank you both very much. Big round of applause, please, for both teams as we go into their round one. Right, well, we know all about this. It's teamwork, very much under pressure. Each team will get 80 seconds. I'll throw some very fast, very hard general knowledge questions in their direction. If they answer them individually correctly, they'll get two points. If they have to confer or consult, then they'll only get one. Right, you know the rules. I'll start with Stockport, and your 80 seconds of teamwork begins now. Dave, which author used the pen name Robert Markham for his novel about James Bond that was entitled Colonel Sun? Kingsley Amis. Kingsley Amis. One point for conferring. Mike, who won the very first Nobel Prize for Physics for his discovery of X-rays? Ronchin. Correct. Two points. Hamish, Stevie Wonder's song, I Just Called to Say I Love You, won an Oscar after being heard on the soundtrack of which film? Cool. Pass. It was The Woman in Red. Dave, which Thames bridge is between Hungerford and Lambeth bridges? Westminster. Quick consultation. Westminster. Is right. One point. Mike, in Alan Bennett's film, A Private Function, what were the central characters trying to hide from the food inspectors? A pig. That's right. Two points. Hamish, which committee reported in July 1984 on the controversial subject of surrogate parenthood? The Warnock Committee. That's right. Two points. Dave, which park is on the other side of Constitution Hill from Buckingham Palace? St. James's. No, it's Green Park. Mike, who commanded the Argentinian forces on the Falklands and signed the surrender document in June 1982? No, pass. It was Menendez. Hamish, who wrote the 18th century stories Captain Singleton and Colonel Jack? Pass. No, Daniel Defoe. Dave, what relation was Queen Victoria to her predecessor, William IV? Niece. Niece. That's right. Mike, what's the... <coughs> Sorry, Mike. Out of time, let's look at the Comfy Jill's score after that first round. They've got a fairly respectable nine points. Congratulations. <laughs> As I say, it's not too bad. Let's go across to number two team, the Elton View of Bury, and see if they can do rather better. You have 80 seconds of your round starting now. Terry, which British bird song is popularly supposed to sound as if it's singing a little bit of bread with no cheese? Pass. It's the yellow hammer. Jim, which character is the child of Sycorax in Shakespeare's play The Tempest? Pass. It's Caliban. Lyndon, which Victorian novelist, wife of a Unitarian minister, wrote Mary Barton, Sylvia's Lovers, and Ruth? Mm. Mrs. Gaskell. He's conferring. Mrs. Gaskell. Hurry up. Say it. Hurry up. Mrs. Must... Gaskell. Mrs. Gaskell, thank you. Terry, of which football league club did Morris Evans take over as manager when Jim Smith left in 1985? Norwich City. 
I'm afraid you're wrong. It's Oxford United. Jim, what's the principal river flowing through Lisbon? Tagus. Correct. Two points. Lyndon, the future of what was the subject of the 1983 Franks Commission report? Broadcasting. Broadcasting. No, it was the Falkland Islands. Terry, who beat Pat Cash in the final of the 1988 men's singles in the Australian Tennis Championships? Maurice Becker. No, it was Mats Villander. Jim, what nationality is the dramatist and poet Vol Soyinka awarded the 1986 Nobel Prize for Literature? Finnish. No, he was Nigerian. Lyndon, at which royal residence did King George V die in 1936? Sandringham. Yes, you got it right. You got two points. It was indeed Sandringham. So at the end of that round, the Elton View of Berry have scored five points. And if we look at both teams' score, as I say, Berry have five, but uh, four points ahead are the Comfy Jill of Stockport on nine as we go into round two. <laughs> Very much all to play for. I shall now ask our spotlight contestants to step forward, please. For Stockport, it's Dave Bell, and for Berry, it's Jim Hobbins. Would you please come forward, gentlemen, as quickly as you can? As we know, in Spotlight, they will have five questions each on their specialist subject. They'll get three points for every correct answer, but. If they can't answer or they get it wrong, I will hand it across to the opponent for a possible bonus of three points. So, your specialist subject, Dave, is uh, sport, and your first question on that begins now. Which Hungarian-born man won 20 English table tennis titles between 1931 and 1953? Victor Barna. Is correct. Three points. Jim, your first question. Whose top ten hits included Pretty Vacant and Who Killed Bambi? Sex Pistols. That's right, on your subject of pop music of the 60s and 70s. Dave, question two. What was the name of the Australian yacht defeated in the final of the 1987 America's Cup? Cookaburra three. Is correct, three points. Jim, what was Pete Wingfield's only chart entry reaching number seven in 1975? I'm sorry, I don't know. Then I can hand that across for a possible bonus to Dave Bell. 18 with a bullet. Is correct. You've picked up an extra three points. Your third question. Over what distance is the Kentucky Derby run? One and a half miles. I can hand that across for a possible bonus to Jim of Barry. One and a quarter miles. Is correct. And you've got a three-point <laughs> bonus back. And your third question now. Jim, under the spotlight, in 1957, Frankie Vaughan's first number one hit was Garden of Eden. What was his second in 1961? Green Door. I can hand that across to Dave Bell. Um, Tower of Strength. You've got it right for three bonus points. And your fourth question, and this is a real head-to-head, -head, isn't it? In which sport were Liverpool Police the English champions in 1970 and London Latvians SK in 1973. Basketball. You've got it right for three. Your fourth question, Jim. Whose only hits that each reached number four in 1971 were He's Gonna Step On You Again and Tokoloshi Man? Um. Have to hurry in. Oh, sorry, I'll have to pass on that one. Then I'll pass it across. To Dave Bell, who thinks hard. No, I can't remember. No, all right, it was John Congas. John Congas. And your fifth and final question now, Dave. Who was the only Italian to be world heavyweight boxing champion? Primo Carnera. Well done. You have your final three points. And, Jim, on to you for your fifth and final question in the spotlight. Ike and Tina Turner had two top ten hits together. They were River Deep and Mountain High, and what else? Not Bush City Limits. Absolutely right. For three points. Congratulations to both of you. An excellent round as you return to your seats. <laughs> they were pretty good. They were pretty good. Let's have a look at the scores now. We see that the Elton View of Berry have gone up to 14 points, but the Comfy Jill of Stockport are way ahead on 27 as we go into the third and final round. <laughs> Thank you.
Well, it's quite a gap as we now hit on the buzz around. 27 plays 14, but Berry can certainly make it up. We've had uh, wider gaps than that close at this stage in the game before, so Berry, don't lose heart. You're still in with a very big chance indeed. If you're both, re both ready, you will now have 100 seconds worth of general knowledge questions. You'll get two points for every correct answer that you give if you hit the buzzer first, but if you get it wrong, I will take a point away from you. So 100 seconds of on the buzzer begins now. Under what stage name did Helen Porter Mitchell, the Australian singer, become famous? No. Nope. Yes, and that's uh, Barry and Lyndon. Nellie Melba. Well done, yes, you've got two points. What's the title of the 1988 film about the murder of the Earl of Errol in Kenya's Happy Valley, starring Greta Sachi? Ooh, and that's uh, Stockport and Mike. Out of Africa. You lose a point, Mike, it's white mischief. The movement and slaughter of what were still kept under government control in Britain more than a year after the Chernobyl nuclear disaster? And that's Stockport and Mike again? Sheep. Correct. In 1987, pop performer Adam Horowitz was found not guilty of hurling a beer can into the audience at a show. What was his pop group called? And that's Berry and Terry. The Beastie Boys. Correct. Which palindromic word means a 60th part of a fluid dram, a downstroke in calligraphy, or a musical note worth four quavers? And that's uh, Barry and Jim again. Minim. Correct. Opera North has its home base at the Grand Theatre in which city? And that's Barry and Terry. Leeds. Correct. About which show did Michael Crawford say, if this is a success, I'm going to buy myself a new dressing gown when it opened on Broadway in January 1988? And that's Barry and Lyndon. Phantom of the Opera. Correct. Two points. In which television detective series does Elisa Goddard often appear playing jewel thief Philippa Vale? And that's Barry and Jim again. Bergerac. Correct. The stone staircase called Jacob's Ladder at Edel in Derbyshire is at one end of which long distance footpath? And that is Stockport and Mike. Pennine Way. Is correct. Two points. Well, I said it was close. Indeed it was. Just four points in the lead were the comfy Jill of Stockport with 30 points and they go through to the next round. Congratulations. Well, very, very close indeed. Really only two correctly answered questions in it, if you look at it. 20, 30 plays 26, just those four points between the two. But it's the Comfort who go through into the next round. Congratulations to them. Commiserations to Barry. Good night.